We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well, Jared. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm tired. I was outside painting. Tired? I was outside tired. painting. I was outside painting, and it's... Why are you doing adult stuff? Because uh, I spent all Saturday watching college football. Oh, that's and I had to get I had to get too. <laughs> I had to get something done, right? Exactly, no matter. And <laughs> no, I, I I had to get something done. Yeah. All right. It is our Scarlet and Grade episode, so we'll be talking about uh, the Toledo game, and let's just start this off at the top here, Jared. Is this is this what you expected? No. Honestly, what I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say this right up front. This is a better team, in my opinion. Toledo is a better team than Arkansas State. Well, no, Nomad says this is what happens yeah. when we have JSN. Um, and yes like I get no. that I get that he uh, draws attention. Um, two receptions for 33 yards. You know what I mean? Like we were real excited to get Fleming back and we're real excited to get JSN back. And then it was just Abuka, Abuka, Stover, so, Marvin Harrison Jr. So um, I know there's a, I want to kind of structure this a little bit here because I know we, we're going to go all over the place here. How dare I mean, there's, you? <laughs> there's, there's a lot I think that I want to take away from this and just say right off the tap, top here, tap tap top here but <laughs> you're gonna tap um, the but, podcast and go right off the top yes <laughs> all right so 77 21 uh, i think i think most people when i look when we look at our our sloop picks here i want to say most people picked ohio state yeah most people picked ohio state to uh to cover here and which was ohio state's first cover for the year and they did it easily, <laughs> easily. They won by, what was that? 56 points. And the over under was at what? 35, 31, 35, 31. As yeah, Nomad easily, points easily. out, they hit the over by themselves. <laughs> yeah. Um, so looking at the stats here. Yeah. Just did not expect Ohio State to have this crazy of a, of a showcase on offense. Uh, I knew eventually, knew eventually it, things were just going to click just like that. And this was the game here. 763 yards of offense. They scored well, on their first seven drives. They scored touchdowns, ended up scoring 11 touchdowns for the game, which is just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. There's some, there's, I think there's still a couple of teams that is still struggling to get two touchdowns for the year <laughs> did, did, did i did oh, I how's that yeah i was about to say did i ever get a second touchdown this week <laughs> and no we're not counting uh, iowa touchdowns we're talking actual touchdowns yes uh well we'll get into that in our, in our next episode but yeah 763 yards in this game that uh, I, I don't know what austin's over under was here if he put a if he put a Total only gave us a yardage here, one, but mm, whatever it would have been, whatever it would have been, I would have probably said under, <laughs> but man, yeah, this is just an absolute showcase here. Just saying some numbers here, 367 yards by CJ Stroud, 22 for 27. He matched the amount of incompletes he did for touchdowns, which I'll leads into Nomad's question, which, which is a better stat? five touchdowns or five incompletes. Well, I think, I think they have to go. I think they have to go together. Right. I think that, that that's a stat that's pretty good and a stat that's pretty good. Then you put them together and it's a fantastic, pretty good. That, that's, that's fantastic. Five touchdowns, five incompletes. That's, that's fantastic. Now I said, you put them back. together. I was trying to, I was trying to do a greater side. I was trying to do a greater than the sum of the holes thing. But to answer Nomad's question, uh, I'm going to say I'm going to say five touchdowns is more impressive because five incompletes can be misleading because maybe a 
the best decision is to throw it away. And so that that shows up as an incomplete pass, but it but when you actually watch it in live, it's actually a better it's a better play than trying to force it in there. Now, <laughs> unless you're CJ Stroud and then you have Fleming who just made a crazy catch in the end zone. I thought he was just throwing that away and here it is. Here's Fleming stretching out to get to get the uh touchdown. I I don't know which nah. one it was, but no, nah, he that was he he CJ Stroud, that's that's just become his pass. That roll out to the corner, throw the ball about three yards out of bounds and expect one of his guys to snag it. That's just that's just what CJ Stroud does now. That that's that's Fair. that's just one of his favorite things in his arsenal. That's what he does now. Mm-hmm. That's fair. That's fair. CJ Stroud is currently 72.9 completion percentage on the season. That's that's silly. Because like, say, say what you want to say about Notre Dame. Uh, they have disappointed in their in their in their next two games after Ohio State for sure. No doubt. But Look at that next episode, their defense is, I have a lot is to say. their defense is still really, really good. Notre Dame isn't struggling because of their defense. So it's not like Ohio State has had three, you know, cupcakes uh, as far as, you know, it, from the very least from a offensive perspective. Uh, their yeah. offense playing the other defense perspective. Mm hmm. So let's not not let's even finish. two and a half nomad. Notre Dame has a legitimate defense. Again, say what you want to say about their offense, but if we're talking about from an offensive production standpoint, Ohio State has definitely played a top tier football team. Yeah. Has their mm-hmm. defense played a top tier football team? No. So Ohio State mentioned 763 yards, almost 500 of that passing, 280 yards on the ground for about 6.4 yards per rush. Really good. That That's that's the number I look at. You get over six yards of carry against a team that you should be able to run all over the all over the field with, and they, they did the job there. Um, hat, hats off to that. And probably the most important, well, not most important, but one of the key things here that I really like here, Jared, out of the 78 plays that Ohio State ran, zero turnovers. Zero fumbles. Yeah, I mean that's obviously without saying, without without it needing to be said, huge. It's, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. So um, offensively here, offensively here, Jared, who, eleven who for really thirteen s- on third down is is a stat here. I really like. Yes. Yes. Um, and this this unfortunate this this stat I put in the notes doesn't have. Nah, no, it's I'd be interested to see what their like yards per play was, but it's not it's not in my notes, unfortunately. Um, the. Uh, yeah, but uh, well, I mean, what, what else can we really say here other than the high state like totally dominated this game with the exception of a couple of big plays by their quarterback, which like we let you know was a thing that could happen. Um, mm-hmm, yeah. The, the two so off- big is, is two big passes aren't necessarily something that I think should have happened. His big run, his big runs, uh, him making plays with his legs absolutely uh, is a thing that you should have been aware could happen. Mm-hmm. Um, RCBs need work. I don't, I, I, I haven't seen, I don't, I don't know if Brown was guilty on that first touchdown or not. Um, uh, don't dare try and spin it, Jared. They were ass. Burke gave up a play. He absolutely should not have given up 100%. Mm-hmm. Um, I I don't know. Cause I, I haven't, I never saw a replay that leads me in one direction or another to know if, the play that big play that Brown gave up was actually his fault. Mm-hmm. I just, I'm just saying, I don't know. Uh, well, that, that's, that's nice. I mean, Austin says you play corner to high state. You can't fuck up. I, I really don't know if how, how true that is. Um, 
or how realistic that is. I mean, um, to, play, to play devil's advocate, I mean, Ohio State was down quite a few defensive backs. Proctor didn't play. McAllister didn't play. And then Cameron Brown uh, was out as well, I think, in the, sometime in the second quarter. Uh, so, I mean, they were down quite a few players, but it's hard for me to 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 agree with Austin saying you you play corner, you can't mess up. I'm giving up one big play is too many. I I don't know if that's entirely true because I mean there, there's only so much you can do on defense, and sometimes offense you just if you have a better offensive play, it doesn't matter doesn't matter how good of a defense you have. It, it just play um, good players are just going to make good plays eventually. Yeah. And, and like the first big touchdown, I don't, like I said, I never saw a replay. I know Brown was like right there. So it's, it's easy to sort of say, look, it's Brown's fault, but maybe you, maybe there should have been, a, I, I don't know. I'm just saying, I, I don't know what the defense was. I never saw a replay of that play for, for me to be able to say, Oh, Brown, definitely. That was his fault. I, I just, I don't know that. Uh, maybe yeah. it was, maybe it wasn't. I, I don't know. Um, the Burke play is not a play Burke should be giving up. I'll, I'll say yes. that a hundred percent. That's, I, I, I don't, that, that's not a play he should be giving up. It's not a play. I don't think he gives up last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's definitely something to keep an eye out with Burke. Yeah, I, I agree. There's definitely some questionable playmaking from Burke this year. I'm curious on how, how well he'll be able to clean that up as the season goes along. Uh, to kind of go along with Toledo here, we we talked about uh, about Daquan in our uh, preview show. He's going to make plays. You just have to limit them. And I think overall, I think Ohio State did limit him overall. He he made some plays with his feet, and you saw a lot of comparisons and uh, about about how he ran how he escaped from the pocket and there's some plays he, he looked like a taller Braxton in a way just the way he was able to get out of the pocket and make guys let miss and make a play and he he made a few plays but I think overall other than a couple of uh long runs that um Daquan had and that one really long pass I thought Ohio State did a pretty good job of containing him it was actually one long run and two long passes. Um, the uh, yeah, so, yeah. So if you, yeah, you're right. So the two two passes, unless of course you're 50, counting it, long ways, yard. in which case he had many long runs, but going long ways. Yeah. <laughs> he um. So he had a 50 yard touchdown and a 40 yard. So that's 90. So he only had 63 yards out of his other eight uh, completed passes or his other. 17 attempts he had yeah 60 yards 63 yards uh yeah and i think again you're you're gonna give some but, but i don't i don't like the braxton comparison i said it in the discord i'll say it right here um he might run like braxton but he he throws like bowserman like and i'm not saying braxton was ever the prettiest thrower of all time he wasn't but he's much better, much better thrower um, than than Finn. Um, Finn reminds me more of Denard Robinson than he does than he does Braxton Miller. But anyway, Kyle, I think we should get into the portion of the show that name makes you want to puke. Austin says, "Yeah, that's well, well." Before before we give great, well, I guess kind of goes along with great. I want to definitely give a. Big uh, shout out to uh, Mayan Williams and Kathy and Hayden, who just did really, really good work when Henderson was out, which I still haven't heard official things from from Henderson still. But man, that the other running backs there, I was really, really impressed with. They and we probably won't the slack there. We probably won't get like a uh, good word. I, you know, I mean, like, uh, day keeps that stuff pretty close to his chest. Um, but what, what we can say is he never took his pads off. 
Uh, he didn't appear to ever have his helmet. Like, it seems like they, they made the choice not to let him back in the game. They take away his helmet. Um, you know, but he never takes his pads off. He's goofing around on the sidelines. He's talking to guys. Um, he's walking, standing on the sideline the entire time. I'm I'm willing to bet that if absolutely necessary, he could have come back in. Mm-hmm. That's my the- assumption. That's my assumption watching the game and watching him on the sidelines. He didn't look like a guy who was upset or really not that I saw him running on the sidelines, but he didn't look like he's a guy who was limping or, but like I said, he didn't even take a, sh- if, if, if his lower injury, if his lower leg injury was that bad, wouldn't they at least have him take the, the shoulder pads and stuff off? Like, yeah, true. There, there was, um, I mean, I didn't get to see it. I didn't actually see it at all, but saw some pictures later uh, on Sunday though, Jared, but he, he was in a walking boot too. So I don't know if that if you were, I don't believe he was on a, I don't believe he was in a walking boot uh, as I bring up the picture. Um, well, I can't really bring up the picture all that well in the, in the discord chat there, but I don't believe he was in a walking boot on the sidelines. So, um, yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see. We'll see. He'll be fine. And I think think Ohio State will be, Ohio State's going to be fine with, with Williams. Kyle, what's rule one? The doctor lies. I'm thinking the doctor told him to put on a walking boot. And I don't mean the actual doctor in this case. All right. Let's, uh, let's go ahead. And get, Nomad says everyone get, lies. That's kind of that's kind of what I mean. All right. Let's get into the grades here, Jared. All right. So, oh, you're you're starting off um, coaching. You were saying coaching. What kind of grade? And everybody in the chat here, go ahead and um, uh, play along here. Give your grading for each of the the groups that we're going to have here. So, coaching here from a A plus to to a F minus scale what what would you give the coaching the coaching staff i i give an a i i didn't see anything i disliked i i agree it's hard to give an a plus just because it's toledo um but yeah (laughs) i mean they they came out and they did what they're supposed to do against toledo they didn't him haw around they went out they scored 28 points in the force in the first quarter um this is exactly what you should do against Toledo. Yes. When, exactly. And I say that knowing that this isn't always what happens against a team like Toledo. Mm-hmm. So I got a B, I got an F, <laughs> I got a B plus. <laughs> Y'all are haters. What on earth did the coaches do wrong? Honestly, we, we saw n- no penalties. We saw no turnovers. We saw 28 points in the first quarter. Defensively. Penalties were there. Wow. Uh, Wow, only one. One penalty. Wow. That's... And they had nine against Arkansas State. Toledo's yes. a better team. You can say, wow. oh, it was Toledo. Arcan- Toledo's a better team than Arkansas State. Wow. That yeah, that that, that was that was my concern. One of my concerns was well, Austin, if you remember, we do specifically Notre Dame and Arkansas State, but only having one here in Toledo? Yeah, that's that was a really clean game. Yes. Keep in mind, we also do specifically offensive and defensive coaching as well. All right. All right. Offensive coaching. I'll go A plus here. Yeah. I mean, it has to be A plus. There's anybody else who doesn't give less than an A plus. You're you're kidding yourselves here. Uh, quarterback. Quarterback. I mean, any. A plus again. I mean, yeah, you, absolutely. You, no, it's an A plus. I mean, look, look to Nomad's question about the five incompletions and five touchdowns. Um, and not to mention Kyle McCord, five for seven, 115 and a touchdown. Mm-hmm. Remember, we're grading the entire position here. Kyle McCord also had a really good, you know, mop up duty play. Yep. <laughs> Two incompletions he's watched. 
<laughs> yeah. See, yeah. This is why Kyle McCord is not the starter. He had one touchdown and two incompletions. He needed to either have one less incompletion or one more touchdown to, to be the standard. <laughs> it makes you feel better. McCord had as many incompletions as, um, wow, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name, uh, as the Alabama quarterback has thrown interceptions against a more inferior team. Yes, Young. Offensive line. How do we like the offensive line this game? Chat, how before, you like the before, offensive line? Yeah, before before you say, before you give ratings here, the Ohio State rushed the ball 6.4 yards per attempt. I think they had one holding call. I think that's what that five-yard penalty was, maybe. I don't remember. 11 for 13 on third downs and zero sacks allowed. No mad in Austin are saying it was a false start, which, um, if I remember okay. correctly, was on a wide receiver or a tight end. They they blamed the center, but I saw the replay and I didn't. Yeah, they called Whipler. They called Whipler, but I saw the replay. I don't think Whipler moved. That's right. That's right. Yes. Yeah. But yes, Austin, there was zero sex. So I, an overall just clean, clean game here from the offensive line. Clean pocket for Stroud and McCord. A plus. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm going to give an A plus here as well. Um I will say the the backup offensive line didn't look great, but I think we already knew that there are some depth issues yep. um, in the offensive line. All right. Running they back. did adequate, Austin says. I think they got to adequate. I think the first series they went in, it wasn't it wasn't great. Mm -hmm. But I think running they got there. Uh, a back. plus on the running backs. 6.4 yards, 44 attempts, 280 yards. Anderson goes down, but you got your you got your backup um, running back who rushed at 7.7 .7 yards per carry. And then your true freshman is the first running back this year to get over 100 yards for the season. Who, and who then, had and Dallin then, Hayden as the first 100-yard runner of the season? Then you had and then you had a had a walk on running back who just had the best uh, running play of the season for Ohio State so far this year. <laughs> that dude, that dude did not want to get down. By the way, <laughs> Caffey walk on. Yes, a lot of times when you see a walk on on the field and doing stuff, um, they're typically like a junior or a senior. Um, mm -hmm. Caffey is. I want to say a true freshman. If he's not a true freshman, he's a second year player. Um, right. Red shirt, you think? Um, he's either a first or a second year player. I I, I know he's a freshman. I, I can't remember if he's a red shirt or not. Point is, is that I think he's going to get a scholarship. I'm just I'm just saying um, this isn't like a fifth year player who they were just giving carries to because he was a fifth year. It says walk it on. Says here. It says here, Jared. He is a true freshman. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Uh, Austin says he's a true freshman. He's from Hubbard, uh, right down the road. I assume you mean from you, Austin? Yep, uh, Hubbard, yeah. Ohio. Yep, Hubbard, Ohio. Yep. Oh, from your hometown. Nice. Not where you currently Wide are. Wide receivers, Jared. Uh, uh, a plus. I mean, this is this is going to be boring. Unfortunately, uh, it's <laughs> don't don't. You're the one that said it, Austin. God damn it! All right, I don't think we need to spend too much time <laughs> on some of these because I think we're all going to agree. Wide receivers, a plus. Tight ends, a plus as well. Stover's really, really making some. Uh, I'm sorry. Great routes. Are you just going to fast forward through the wide receivers? I Did am. Just... It's Emeka Abuka, seven catches, 116 yards and a touchdown. Jaden Ballard. Uh, the This was, I think, was. 
I know he said A plus, but like, let's let's talk about it. <laughs> Jaden Ballard, uh, four receptions. Were these all from McCord, or, or or maybe one of these from? Did anyone remember for sure? I, um, I don't remember. I'm not sure either. Marvin Harrison Jr. Uh, you know, just another two touchdown game. Kyle, uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. failed to get three touchdowns this game. Is has he peaked? Has Marvin Harrison Jr. peaked? I feel like I, know. I feel like the he had a Rose Bowl, he gets three touchdowns. And then in week two, he gets three touchdowns. In this, only two. This game he only gets two. I think he's peaked. I think he's washed. I think it's game over. Yeah, Buka, Ballard, and Harrison Jr. each having over 100 yards for the game, and each of them at least one. As Jared just said, Harrison Jr. had two. And Fleming, two of his three receptions ended up for touchdowns. Uh, the, the chat here wants a fullback grading here. You had a fullback with one carry for one yard and one touchdown. I think we can count him as a tight end. Um, include that with Stover, who had three catches for 83 yards, including a 38 yard. Uh, uh, what was an excellent play design um, on a, on a rollout to the right side of the field? Um, yeah, uh, I, I give the tight ends an A plus here too, especially if we're going to count the full. You know, if we say like fullback slash tight end or tight end slash fullback, and include that into the same category, that's an A plus mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Give us a fullback category. He wears 34. Numbers don't mean anything anymore. I don't know if you know that, Nomad. Numbers don't mean anything anymore. All right. A plus is all the way down on the offensive side. Now the defensive side, Jared. Defensive We're a little, a little more a little more critical here. All right. Defensive um, coaching overall. Um, I saw a couple missteps. Um I saw uh, situations in which guys who probably shouldn't have been responsible to spy Finn were spying Finn. Um, I, Nomad says still too many big plays like that was going to, it was just going to happen with this quarterback. I, you, there were going to be big plays. It's I, I'm not, yeah, you guys are being way too hard, way too strict. Um, I thought the defensive scheme was fine. Um, the big, the big, pl the the scores that came came on big plays. Um, I'm not worried about the defense from a coaching standpoint at all. I still saw an aggressive defense. Have to be ready for JJ and Clifford. That this guy's ten times more athletic than the athleticism of t those two guys combined. I'm not, it is not worried. Right, I'm not so worried I, at all. I'm giving the defensive coaching staff an A minus in this game. I say B plus. Okay. I, I think, I think y'all are being way too critical. Yeah. And, and averaging for our, our um, folks in the chat here, it looks like it's an average of about B minus for them. Oh, you're now, now you're being nice, Kyle. There. Well, there's a there's a B plus, there's a C plus, and then there's a C minus. So either C B minus or C plus is what the average comes down. Yeah, I just I I just don't see a coaching issue here. Sorry, Austin, if that's disappointing for you, but I I don't see a, a I don't see a coaching issue. All right, all right. Let's move on to the defensive ends here. What would you rate the defensive ends? Jack Sawyer had a sack, two tackles for, for loss. Uh, John Baptiste had two sacks, two tackles for loss. Uh, yeah, I, th I thought overall, to me, I thought the defensive ends did a did a really good job. The, the, one, the one issue I had with them is containment. Uh, they, they lost containment with a very mobile quarterback. Here's I, the thing. Here's the thing, though, they against any other quarterback they're going to play this year. They had containment. They had him contained. It's just that 
this dude's not a human being. Finn's not a human being. That doesn't change what happened in this game. It kind of, I mean, Knowles himself said, Knowles himself said that you're going to give up, I think he said three to four big plays against this offense. Yeah, that means bad. the game, that doesn't mean the game plan was good. I think you're just not giving credit where credit's due as far as what Finn is capable of. Finn. That's who. You have to give credit where credit's due. You can still plan against them. But when you have your two of your defensive ends in perfect containment and they're right there and they put hands on him, but he's just too fucking quick. And then he breaks containment and goes scrambling out and he has five seconds to throw the ball because he ran from one side of the field to the other. That's insanely difficult to game plan against. Well, I, I'm giving him an A minus overall. Really, really good job. But yeah, I, I'll stick with an A minus for, for, for my um, grade for the defensive ends. I agree. All right. Um, defensive tackles. Um, I thought the defensive tackles were good. Um, you, you didn't see anything in this in this offense uh, from a rushing standpoint. Um, yeah, outside, outside of Finn. Outside of, outside, yeah, outside of the quarterback, they held the running backs to 54 yards on the ground. Pretty good. I, I thought I thought they did a pretty good job. So I... I think I think I would give the defensive tackles like an A A minus. I thought I thought they did a pretty good job. Yeah, um, I, I would. Yeah, not having Mike Hall in this game, which I don't think anyone knew that was a thing, but I did. Mike Hall does not play in this game, and they sort of lacked. Were we supposed to watch the game to comment here? It does help. Um, I, I just didn't see like any big impactful plays aside from that one in which Tylee completely flattened that the, I believe it was a running back. Um, but I just didn't, I didn't see a lot of like disruption from the defensive tackles. So I think an A minus is a fine grade here. Okay. All right. Linebackers, Jared. What would you grade the linebackers? Um, I thought the linebackers were, were fine. I thought Tommy, Tommy Eichenberg made a couple of nice plays. Um, I didn't see a ton from chambers in this game. I know chambers again, like on one of the, on one of the big runs from the quarterback chambers was supposed to have spy. He, he just didn't get there in time. Yeah. But again, like, he was in good position to get him. He just got out athleted. Um, they took shit angles often in this game. I don't think they properly respected Finn and how fast he was. I, if I'm being honest with you, I think that's a, it's a big issue with a lot of the angles they took. Um, I just don't think they were ready for how fast, how athletic Finn was. Yeah. I'll, um, I'll give him a, I won't, I won't be as lenient for the linebackers as it was on the defensive uh, line. I'll give the linebackers like a B, B plus. I thought overall they did. They were, like you said, they were fine. Yeah. But not great. Yeah, I agree. Okay. All right. B's across the board. All right. Moving to the defensive back. So let's, let's start with the corners. Uh, mentioned about Cameron Brown going down. In the second quarter, uh, yeah. What, what do you, what do you make of these, uh, these cornerbacks in this game? Uh, I th first, we have to say that the the wide receivers here, like we can talk up and down about how good Finn is. Um, I, I, there's not a wide receiver on this team that I think is gonna get even a sniff of the NFL. Um, 
And overall, overall, you know, they they hold the team to uh, the quarterback had 150 yard, 153 yards passing like the corners, the defensive backs as a whole were good. Most of the game, um, there were two big passes given up. So I, I don't want to define. And again, like when we already talked about this, I don't know who the fault was with the Brown. Um, look, Brown was trailing him. It's easy to say it was Brown's fault. I don't know if that's true. Um, the other one was Burke's fault and it was Burke's fault. Like he shouldn't let that happen. Um, but should we let those two plays define the entirety of the game for the corners? Yes and no. Yes and no. Um, because again, they held the wide receivers to not much. Um, one reception, two reception, three reception, two reception, two reception, one reception, 50 yards, 42 yards. And both of those were by uh, the, the two big plays. Um, the then 35 yards, 30 yards, 15 yards, 10 yards. Like they had a really good game aside from two plays. Um, but those two big plays were two very big plays. Yep. So I, I, I would give them like a C plus. I think that's harsh. As, a, as an over as an overall. Yes. For most of the game, they did well, but y- you got to take the good with the bad as well. And that's why I'm giving a C plus. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do like a B minus um, again. Partial on, on the con side, the, the plays that were given up shouldn't have been given up on the con side. These not a huge challenge from a wide receiver talent standpoint, as far as Toledo goes Mm -hmm. on the plus side, it was just two plays and they were pretty lights out on all the other plays. Yep. All right. And safeties. We, we, um, get to, we got to we got to see our first hand of uh, of Sony Styles and boy he, yeah. he he made his presence known when he came in. We did see our first Sony Styles. Um, again, like the the again the two the two big passes that were given up were deep passes. Yes, they were. How much of that is the responsibility of the corners versus? Again, without without proper, we I didn't get proper replay on on the first one. The second one does look like Burke was in like a man coverage. So again, I'll keep that one on Burke. Was was the big play the first big play? Should a safety have been there? I don't know. Um, it looks like it was the corner responsibility on the Burke play. Yes, because I think they were man up in that play. I don't know about the first touchdown, the first big play mm-hmm. that was given up. Um, uh, so I'm getting in here. A A A minus was the. Well, yeah, I'm 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 fine with an A minus here. Okay. Um, I mean, I gotta I gotta be fair because we don't know, like what you said of that first touchdown. If it was, see you, Nomad. But, if it was on the defensive backs or if it was in the safety. So that's why I'm giving it kind of like a B plus and not an A minus. Cause I, I don't know if it was on the safeties or if it was a man to man coverage uh, on that first touchdown. I, I don't know. So um, I'll, I'll just, I'll stick with a B plus then. All right. Special teams. Um, did we really F. even see anything from the special F. teams here to F F F F Jared. What? I didn't get my touchdown. Yeah. Is, is it, is it purely pass fail with you from here on out? It is. It is. But no, in all honesty, I mean, Murko's no one punt was good. There, there was no, <laughs> there was no field goals to be um, attempted. There was one punt and that was like, that was a pure, like, uh, video game punt. You 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 angle it 
it went right at the two yard line. Yeah, it was a, it was was a just... perfect, perfect coffin corner kick. Um, yes. Yeah, so thing I, beauty. it was. I, I thought it was fantastic. I but not just like not a lot to go on here. Um, so like an A is fine by me. I mean, in this in this game, what what more could you ask from the special teams? There's one punt. You get you nailed it inside the five. Didn't have to. Um, Noah Ruggles hit every hit every um, extra point attempt. It, it's got to be an A plus for what was there. There there wasn't the there wasn't the special teams touchdown. Oh, that's true. All right, I'll just I'll just give him an A. Uh, <laughs> With all those punts, I'm mostly kidding. All right, Kyle, Buckeye leaves. You got any Buckeye leaves to hand out? Buckeye leaves to hand out. I'm gonna give. I'm gonna Hayden? give one to Caffey. All right, you okay. Give one to Caffey, and I'll give one to Hayden. Looks like uh, our first our first chat response was Hayden as well. Um. Oh, what about on the defense? I'm going to give mine to Ransom. Um, leads the team in tackles, gets an interception. Um, so, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll give, I'm going I'm to go with Ransom. I'll give mine to JJB. Two sacks, two, two um, tackle for losses there. Mm, yeah, I, he, had a, he had a really good game. So I'll give it to JBB. So we have a we have a um, JTT, we have a Sawyer. I get mine to ransom. Yep, and Jared Jared has ransom here. All right, now we have an additional leaf to give out. We have our wild card leaf, Kyle. Who do you want to give that to? Austin says Ballard. So we'll give give the chat one to. to I'll give there. the chat one to Ballard. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll give I'll give Stover. I'll give Stover okay. my wild card one. I, I don't hate that. What, what would you be? What would yours be, Jared? You want to give uh, it to the fullback? No, no, I, I don't. I don't. I don't have that fullback love like so many other people do. Um. Mine, I think I'm going to give my wild card one um, to Emeka Ibuka. Um, one of the things I think we saw here was everyone, and rightfully so, right? One of the things we saw in this game, however, was like everyone was really excited for JSN to come back. And Julian Fleming to come back. And rightfully so, right? Um, but what did we see like through the first few drives? It was Emeka Buka. It was Marvin Harrison Jr. It was Cade Stover. It was like the guys who had been there the entire time. You know what I mean? It's almost it's almost like Ohio State was sort of game planning for them to try and take out JSN on his on his game back in. And Ohio State was just like, yeah, but the guys we got are still pretty good too. Mm-hmm. So uh, shouts out to Emeka Buka, leading the team in both receptions and yards, and adding a touchdown on top of that. Yeah. Austin says here, also, also an important note, uh, Keon Grays was the first true freshman receiver to see the field. Based off of what I heard out of camp, that is not at all surprising. Yeah, and he did, and he got his first reception as well. He had one catch for two yards. All right, Kyle, uh, questions. All right, um, uh, let's... Go through these real quick here. So we have Duncan says, is there someone in the Ohio State marketing department whose only job is getting Stroud a Heisman? Because there should be. I don't think Ohio State engages in in that. I know that there are, and it tends to be smaller schools who will try to sort of drum up preseason hype for for their player. Um by sending out marketing material and doing stuff like that. I don't think Ohio state typically participates in stuff like that. All right. Um, got a few here from Buckeye Zach. 
Uh, we have here, how stoked should we be for more year of the fullback this season? When was the last time? When was the last time we saw? And like, if if we weren't running short on time, Kyle, this would be look it up, Kyle, look it up. What was the last time we saw a fullback rushing touchdown at Ohio State? Um, last year. Rossi caught one last year. I don't think he ran one last year. I thought he did. I don't. Well, that's a, that's another episode. We'll, we'll look. Uh, Austin says he, he thinks it's 2010. Are we to assume to see more read plays by CJ this season, or was this just a film prep stock up? You know, I wouldn't be surprised if it was the latter. <laughs> Because I remember, especially in the early years of Urban Meyer, when he's like, went for two, went for two, and teams had that in the back of their mind all season, or heck, even the whole Braxton Miller, when he came back and swapped to wide receiver, oh, he could throw the ball. Man, will this be the game Braxton actually throws the ball? Never does happen. Yeah, I don't think his shoulder was, I still don't think his shoulder was right, to be honest with you. No, no, no. Um, are we assuming to see more replays by CJ? I hope so. I mean, it makes the offense that much more dynamic. And uh, should we be worried about the defensive, or excuse me, should we be worried about the cornerbacks? Um, I'm a little bit worried about Burke right now. Um, mm -hmm. um you know, I, I I hope it's not some sort of lingering injury. I hope it's not maybe some sort of confidence that I, I just, whatever it is, I hope that, you know, they can sort of work through it. Um, Cause he's obviously incredibly talented and incredibly skilled. He has everything at his disposal to be able to be great. We've seen him be great. He can be great again. So I'm not, I'm not worried about it from that standpoint. Um, I just hope that whatever it is that sort of needs fixed or figured out that they fix it or figure it out and that we that we get, you know, 2021 Burke back. Yep. 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 All right. Uh, Buckeye Esquire, how long until teams begin to treat Cade Stover like the absolute weapon he is? When Ohio State does it in more than one game. I mean, yeah. you want to talk about, I mean, you talked about uh, the read option plays in CJ. Were they just trying to put that on film? Yada, yada. Were they just trying to put Cade Stover on film in this game? Mm -hmm. After right. he scores uh, three touchdowns against Wisconsin. I won't be mad if that happens. <laughs> yes. They put a All lot right. on film in this game. Yeah, Austin, absolutely. That's why you saw the read option. I think that's why you saw... CJ actually keep one. I think that's maybe why they threw to the tight end so much. I think that's maybe why they didn't throw to JSN like at all yet that you, we saw an eye formation. Um, yeah, I think that there's, I think they were, I think they were purposely throwing a lot of shit on film in this game. I agree with you, Austin. Yeah. Uh, Austin asked after his performance against Toledo, do you think coaches more likely to give Hayden four to seven ish snaps a game to spell the other two running backs, or will we still see just a two headed monster going into big 10 play? I think, I think it's, I think you're going to see Henderson. Um, I think you're going to see the two Henderson and, um, and mine Williams. Those are going to be your two main running backs. And then maybe, maybe in, um, extra time towards the end you'll get you'll get Hayden and um Caffey but nah I, as as much as it was awesome seeing Hayden and Caffey getting those carries um for in the third and fourth quarter it's 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 your two main starters that's going to get the bulk of the carries I agree um I, I don't think it's going to be I think what you saw in this game was them saying we like Hayden enough that we can just tell, you know, oh, oh, Henderson, you know, you had the minorest of minor things. That's OK. We got Hayden set this one out. We want you healthy down the road in Big Ten play. And I think mm -hmm. I think that says a lot about Hayden um, that they were willing to, you know, give him that much of the load. 
Yeah. All right. And last question from Austin. What would need to happen besides USC and Clemson winning out to avoid what looks to be the obvious four making the playoffs? Do we have an obvious four? I think there's an obvious. Yeah, that that, that should probably be for the Tuesday. Episode, yeah. Kyle. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll move. We'll move that one to the next episode, actually. So. But yeah. obvious four. I think there's I think there's an obvious three right now. And if you want me to further explain that thought process, uh, listen to the Tuesday episode. All right. Um, all right, Kyle, I think right, that's... You want to go... Yep. I think that's it. I think that's the end of the show. Um, the... Uh, make sure to make sure to find our highlights. Uh, you can find our highlights on TikTok, on Instagram, on Twitter, on on youtube uh because we have we have a shorts playlist on youtube you can go check those out um it's you know it's tiktok.thesloopcast.com shorts.thesloopcast.com our full-length episodes are on youtube youtube youtube.thesloopcast.com ig.thesloopcast.com and jared that's a lot of addresses i can't keep track of them all you can just go to thesloopcast.com and you can find all of our links there uh, don't forget to join the Discord server. Don't forget to support us on Patreon. That's always super duper appreciated. Um, you can get access to all of our premium content for as little as $3 a month. Um, yeah, just th thanks, Austin. Uh, just go to discord.thesloopcast.com. Um, and it's if you don't know what Discord is, it's just like a big group chat. That's all it, that's all it really is. It's a big group chat. Uh, you can just get the application uh on your on your phone and it's 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 really just that easy um smash that like bu button comment juck farad team kyle and subscribe discord dot the discord dot the discord dot discord <laughs> i read that verbatim austin i i i my brain now hurts you didn't. Maybe I didn't. I tried, though. I fucked it up. Maybe I did. I, okay, you know what? Cool. Discord.thesloopcast.com is, is, is where you should go. And uh, Kyle, that's it. Do you have anything in Kyle's Corner? Yeah, how about the legend that is Kyle Snyder? Okay. You remember Kyle Snyder, right? I remember Kyle right. Snyder. Yeah, he, he won his... Um, he won his uh, fourth world slash Olympic gold medal um, just recently as he um, he won the uh, world championship in uh, Serbia recently. And it was his first gold medal in, in five years. So still, still a monster still today. Yeah, I wonder when he's going to make the uh, make the jump into, you know, UFC or some sort of mixed martial arts. Cause I feel like that's coming, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I will bet you $5. He fights in a mixed martial arts, probably the UFC. I feel like that's probably the only real game in town. Um, but $5, $5, mm -hmm. I will bet you $5. He ends up in the UFC. Don't real life cable. All right. That's it. That's all we have, Jared. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, that's, that is rule two, Austin. Austin, I'm going to need you to, to, to write our Bible for us. Thanks. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, that's it. Uh, tonight's ending music. Uh, I didn't line anything up. You got, you got any requests? Anyone, anyone, Kyle, anyone? Anyone? You're, you're the you're the music guy. All right. Uh, I don't think I've played any Mother Folk in a while. We can play them. Um, they will be ending our, our shows this week. Uh, they're a band out of Cincinnati. Um, they're excellent. They're they're very poppy. They're also very insightful. Um, great, great, great live show. If you've never seen them, are they folk rocky? Not really, surprisingly. <laughs> No. <laughs> um, 
Can you play Salt Lake City? I can play Salt Lake City. I'm, I'm going to play them four times this week. I'm sure I'll work Salt Lake City into there somewhere, somewhere. Sometime, somewhere, somewhere, sometime. My brain broke again. Anyway, my brain broke twice now, so it's time to end this episode. Um, at least twice. So, uh, yeah, once again, this is Motherfolk. Uh, you can find uh, more information about them down in the show notes, especially if you're on YouTube, because you don't actually get the ending music. Only the podcast people get that because because YouTube. Right. Um, but if you still want to listen to the song, you can go down to the show notes and click the link. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music and, of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Mother Folk.